It is. It, it, it is. <laughs> oh, welcome back, little darlings, dearies, and demons. Hello, hello. <laughs> Another wonderful episode, our very first full episode on a killer on YouTube. For yep. the rest of you who have watched us on Facebook, it's just nothing, another day. Nothing new to you guys. <laughs> just another day. Now, with this one, we've even discussed this on whether he should actually be categorized as a We're serial We're conflicted killer. on this. Now, in all aspects... According uh, to the FBI definition, yes. But we explained before, that's a problematic definition. And it doesn't quite suit what your everyday person would consider to be a serial killer. So this is one of those ones where we're like, you know, should it be categorized, should he be categorized in this or not? And we're going to do him anyway. As you, as you uh, saw in the, <laughs> well, considering that this killer is dead, at least I'd be getting a stick one. <laughs> uh -huh. That was not a knock at him, by the way. <laughs> I, I, as soon as, as soon as it escaped my mouth You're and like, I spewed forth that excrement. Yeah. yeah I figured yeah. I needed to clarify. <laughs> but today we're talking about James Dale Ritchie. With the the, uh, the midnight killer. Yes, yep. uh, I, I was having issues with the searches because I kept misspelling his name. I kept forgetting. Well, the you team. think Richie, Richie, but it's Richie. <laughs> Anyways. Yosemite. Yeah, yeah, Yosemite. Ugh, <laughs> that one still pisses me off. So, Richie is a American serial killer who throughout July and August of 2016 murdered upwards of five individuals in and around the Anchorage, Alaska area. Um, most of these people were on bike paths in, and in parks. Trails. Yeah. yeah. And he always committed the murders at or around the midnight time frame, earning him the nickname the Midnight Killer. Now, if any of you guys know about Alaska and where, you know, where it's at on, on the planet, along with the rotation of the sun, that part of Alaska only has about five hours of actual night. Now, during the summer solstice, the light from the sun on the horizon, you can still see in the pit, in the middle of night, what would be pitch black in like the Midwest and stuff, it's still somewhat daylight. Well, and then they that get that span of, what is it? It's like, it's like a month of uh, nothing I, but dark. Yeah, I, I don't know the time area, but I know where, where he was at. Uh, the sun ro rose at 4.30 in the morning and set at 11.30 at night. No wonder they have some of the highest insomnia rates in yeah. the nation. And I'll tell you what, if you are a therapist, psychiatrist, psychologist, I personally believe there are two areas in the U.S. that are just ideal for your profession. Washington State, because of all the rain, which has a tendency to depress people, or Alaska, where they have unbelievable amounts of daylight and unbelievable amounts of no yeah, light of at no all, light. Yeah. not to mention exceedingly cold winters that would leave you trapped inside with cabin fever. Oh yeah. my God, they... I guarantee you, quarantine wouldn't jack squat for people in Alaska. Yep. Y'all are used to this. <laughs> you guys are used to being trapped with these people you're supposed to love but suddenly want to kill. <laughs> Figuratively anyway. speaking. Anyways. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, in, 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 Anchorage, Alaska. Now, James, <laughs> and this is what's crazy, is that he was not a stupid person. No. By any no. means. Uh, his uh, his SAT score was, like, uh, was 1,200. 1200. And for anybody outside of the U.S. Uh, who doesn't have an idea of what that is, uh, SATs and ACTs and stuff like that, those are our, those are our big time standardized testing. Like people will study for years. Um, a 1,600 is, is perfect. a perfect score. This guy got a 1,200. I only sat at an 1,100. So yeah, yeah he's fucking smart. Schnikes! That'll First be one. a bleep. <laughs> First one. <laughs> we, we keep tallies. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, he was not a stupid person by any means. And a matter of fact, uh, when he was in high school, he ended up getting a free ride to a college. Yeah, well, okay, so he 
he was of, of, of substantial stature. Uh, standing at, what was it, six foot three? Six foot three, yep. So he played basketball, he played football. And he's really good at it. Yeah. Like, and, super good at and it. And honestly, when it came down to research on his high school years, there wasn't really a whole lot of negativity. No, there wasn't. He, he was pretty much your, your average all-American kid. Yeah, like, a, and even in, like, you know, statements, uh, friends from high school said that he was a good kid. And one of his best friends growing up, Bobby... Uh, and, his, yeah. and I believe it was Bobby's brother that they all hung out together like all the time. I mean, they, they were like they inseparable were known to be together. Um, and then he ended up moving out to Virginia. Um, was it? Yes. So, uh, brain farts. Um, he ended up moving out to Virginia State uh, to attend West Virginia. You, the West Virginia University That's to play was. football in 1994. He lasted a whole semester. That was it. A semester. Then dropped out and went back to Alaska. Which is crazy from how intelligent he is. And what ended up only lasting a semester, he ended up having to move back to Alaska because he and he was into drugs and dog fighting. Yeah, it was, like, it was after this that he got into drug dealing, dog fights, which... We are very opposed to animal cruelty type stuff, so, yeah. Putting that out there. Yeah, just gonna. Um, he was arrested several times between the 94 and 2005 2005, range. that's right. The last time was in 2005. He was apprehended whilst committing a home invasion. That's right, with freaking uh, plastic uh, handcuffs. And two handguns. Oh, I thought, no, I thought it was two handcuffs and the handgun. Nope, two handguns okay. and a set of plastic, really, plastic handcuffs? Yeah, like, what were you... What? How vanilla are you? <laughs> what, what are you going to do? If, I guess maybe the look of it, I don't know. You know what, forget that. Where where does one obtain said plastic Walmart. handcuffs? Really, what, like, like kids' the, handcuffs? Yeah, at the toy section. Like, they come with a little western gun and stuff like that. The hell like, did he think he was like going to do with those? It's like a $10 package that you can get. You think he wore, like, the little plastic the little star? sheriff's star? <laughs> anyway, he ended up serving <coughs> only two years for this. Yep, and then moved back in with his parents. He tried to go straight. He made an attempt at moving back to Virginia yep. to try and go straight to clean himself up. And this was a, actually a violation with him moving because of him doing jail. I'm assuming that he was on parole or, or probation or he something. He more than likely had to get permission. I mean, Right. In which, actually, they ended up not even taking him to court. The cops were like, basically, good riddance. Thank, thankfully, he's out of our area. So they yeah. didn't really give two hoots that he ended up moving. Well, and prior to the B&E, his offenses were relatively minor. It was all all drug charges. Yeah, it was all pretty pretty petty. I mean, yeah. that's not to say that drugs aren't bad. Drugs are bad, kid. Okay? okay. Anyways, um, but yeah, so... Yeah. Uh, but when he moved back in with his parents, he ended up moving back to Alaska because of a breakup with the girlfriend. Yeah, which I didn't find a whole lot on that situation. No, I didn't. I, it, and I really, I honestly didn't feel like sifting and searching into it because it was like... It wasn't really that important, but it was like the st straw that broke the camel's back, if you want to put it that way, because after that, when he moved back to Alaska, that's when the murder started happening. Which... I honestly think maybe I should have sifted a little further because it's like, what kind of breakup was it? How bad was the breakup? Could it have caused something to kind of... Right. Because, you know, prior to well, that... He, he did, he, uh, if I remember correctly, he did go into a men mental institute for a little bit. He attempted to seek mental health, but police There's records no don't show... or anything. Yeah, police records didn't, didn't show whether or not he actually obtained said mental health right. assistance. Right, right. So when he moved back to Alaska, um, this is when the murders start happening. Uh, I believe the first two was a Jason and, and uh, Bri uh, begins with a B. Brianna. Brianna, yeah. Yep, uh, which was on the pathway, uh, was it the ship, ship uh, yard, like park area? I believe so, like down by the docks type yeah. thing. I do have a little map 
of the location of where each victim was located. The location of, boy, that was utterly, just utterly repetitive of me. I do apologize. <laughs> Um, but I will put that I will put that up so that you can kind of see it shows each of the victims. And these first two were uh, both drug users. Uh, Brian, Brianna, mm -hmm. Brianna being only 20 years old, uh, was actually a, a adopted, uh, in which she got into uh, heavy drug usage, and her adopted mother actually tried to help her. Uh, she refused the help and actually ended up becoming homeless. Now. The, yeah. the police don't know if her and Jason were uh, a How were an they item acquaintances or anything, or? but he was almost he was just over twice her age. He was in his forties, and he was again a heavy drug user. Uh, yeah, and normally, normally in that in that sphere, that social sphere, um, age range doesn't matter. No, age range really the, doesn't matter. It's a it's matter of supply and demand. Right. Exactly. Um. But they don't have any connection or uh, any information on connection if they, yeah, if they were. Yeah, the asshole is supplying, and unfortunately, the uh, buyer is desperate. Right. Which, yeah, that's and, a whole other ball of... Mm. And so uh, these two ended up being randomly shot and killed by... Yeah, um, wasn't it like no... They couldn't locate any real evidence of any kind at any of the no, scenes. No, it was like he just came, basically came out from behind a bush and shot these two people. Um, and this is why we can't give Karens handguns. <laughs> and that was... Just saying. So that was the first set, and that was in July of 2016. And then shortly after that is when the other murder ended up happening again that was now was that the the single or was that, that was the, the next single. that's yeah. right because it was a double homicide single, single and, and then, then another double. double homicide now this the third murder was uh in short name trey uh which is crazy because he he murders this kid that was out on his bike um he was a super good kid uh very uh social uh out on his uh, on his bike and the he ended up murdering his Growing up, best friend Bobby, it was Bobby's son, Trey, he ended up killing him. His And, and Bobby was in prison during this time. So he oh had to... Oh my gosh. Yeah, so he had to hear about his son's murder while he was while he was serving time. But that ended up being James's best friend's son. That's so crazy. Now, do you think that... Don't know if it was a setup thing or anything like that. However, um, the... Uh, with Trey, there was three witnesses that actually saw James lurking. But see, in before... that report, didn't they say there were t two people witnessed? Or was it the first murder where they said that they witnessed I two think, people I leaving the th scene? I think it was the first one, uh, which could have <coughs> just been passerbys. Um, but yeah, there's three people, the three females that saw James lurk lurking out and then he like stepped behind a tree and then Trey ends up riding through on his bike, he shoots him, and then he James steals his bike and takes off. Well, these three girls end up hearing the gunshots because the weapon he was using is super loud. Oh, what was it? It's something Python. Yeah, it was a, it was a revolver. Uh, okay. It was a revolver of sort. And uh, yeah, revolvers are they're loud. They got some bang. And so he ends up stealing his bike, and Trey ended up was still alive during this time like he, he was still breathing and then when the police showed up um that's when he ended up unfortunately passing away okay so he was a doa yes okay yep once okay. the police got there they tried tried their best and he ended up passing aha uh -huh. and then in i believe it was august was the next that was the next double homicide okay all right and i do believe wasn't one of those and that's in that's uh Second double homicide. One of them was a homeless man, wasn't it? Yes. And so what's crazy is that I believe the guy, Kevin, was the uh, homeless man and Bryant was the passerby on a bike again. Who just, it, it was just like this matter of wrong place, wrong time yep. situation. Yeah, he, he was a, he, so Kevin was under, under the bridge at the uh, Valley of the Moon Park. That's what it was. Valley of the Moon. Yep. Boy, are some of these just cool the name. most... 
I think it's a freaking cool name. Yeah. Wow. Unlike, you know, you get Washington State that has <coughs> Tequila and Snoqualmie. Dude, when you, How do you look even spell that? When you look at the way Snoqualmie is spelled, there's a QU in there, by the way. <laughs> when you look at the way it is spelled and then hear how it's pronounced, That's like the you got to wonder, bad. wow, what kind of drugs were these people on? <laughs> wow. But, all, and the locals are really, really awesome about correcting you if right, you, if say, you it say it incorrect. Yeah. And they're really awesome about, you know, telling you, oh, well, it's said this way. Right. Like, I got to say, out of a lot of the places I've ever been, Washington State has some of the most polite and accommodating uh, social structures. Really good people out there. And then you start going further south and you get granola eating tree huggers and hippies and people who, you know, sun their buttholes. <laughs> so anyway, so yeah, Kevin was uh, under a bridge. Uh, he was the homeless man uh, that James ended up taking his life, and not, what? Do you think these could have been, sorry, it's just random squirrel thought, do you think these could have been drug related? No, because Trey was not a drug user. No, no, I meant, I meant Richie being on drugs at the time. No, uh, because as far as, from anything that I saw, there was no, after he moved back to Alaska, there was no reports of drug usage. So it or, could just all selling. be mental. Yeah. It okay. could, could just be mental, but the things I read, it didn't state on whether he was on drugs or dealing again or anything like that. Uh, All right, they, sorry. They, they, didn't, they don't know, it's fine. They didn't really touch base on any of that stuff. I just kind of derailed for a um, minute there. That's fine. Ooh, look, shiny object. <laughs> Squirrel. Uh, <laughs> so it was literally right after he killed Kevin that um, it was Bryant. Bryant ended up passing by, and then he shot him right just up. Right wrong off his place, bike. wrong place, yep. wrong time. Yep, and there was witnesses that uh, that uh, there was a, a female jogger that was on the path during this time as well, and she heard the gunshots, uh, witnessed him running away, and so, and I believe it was with Trey, the three girls were actually able to give a, a, a very accurate yes, description. Yes, because they did have a sketch. Yes. Like, uh, and again, I will post that up. Um, yeah, it was It was pretty. relatively close. Yeah. And it was. It was really quite close as far as police sketches go. So, yeah, these girls gave a really, really good description for it to be that accurate. And it's hard. Oh, yeah. Well, especially at the distance that they were at, you know, I mean, it's hard to give an, an accurate description. Well, like and that. it's it's hard to be full full respect to anybody out there who works with the police in that in that career field. It's really really hard to draw a depiction of somebody based off of a, a random person's yeah. description simply because the words an artist would use are Completely not the different. words your common day person would use. Like, if you told me crooked nose, instantly I would know what shape that nose is. Right. Almond shaped eyes, round eyes. I would know those differences. But some people would sit there and say, oh, well, the nose was, you know, a little wonky. Well, wonky doesn't do that right. for me. Was it piggy shaped? Was it flat? Did, did he have, like, no definition between brow and, and bone or, or nose? Or... It would have been difficult. But, yeah, oh. the, the, the description that they gave was super accurate. Now, it was after this fifth murder is when the FBI got involved. And yes. They, and they actually sent uh, uh, made a public announcement saying that there's a $10,000 reward for anybody that helps with the apprehension of the midnight killer. No. But first, we got to back up a second to discuss the fifth victim. The fifth victim was all by chance, yet again, and Richie got caught by accident. Yes. Um, Couple, uh, two months later. Early morning of November 12th, roughly 4, 4.30 in the morning of 2016, a police officer was called to the scene for an, uh, an unrelated unpaid cab fare in that's, downtown yeah, Anchorage. that's right, that's right. 
he then spots Richie just kind of meandering down the street at like 4.30 in the morning. And he's literally just walking along the sidewalk. And there's uh, video footage online that you can... There's... You can't actually find the dash cam footage. Yep. Um, the police officer tried to get Richie's attention. Richie initially snubbed the officer. The officer pay, then gets on his... attention to him. Yeah, the officer then gets on his megaphone. Mm-hmm. Basically, the reason why this officer was trying to get Richie's attention is he's in the area around the same time. Could you have possibly witnessed this? Can you give me a description that's of all, the person? That's all he wanted to ask him if he happened to witness the, ta- the taxi uh, incident. Yes. Suddenly, upon the second request for information, Richie turns and open fires on the officer, who I do believe Hitting took six... Four. Four? Four, yep. Okay. Uh, dam- damaging, shattering his bones, uh, his liver, and his intestines. Okay, okay. And it was, they said there was like seven surgeries afterwards. Yes, and which he did end up surviving, but, okay. but after he got shot is when he got out of his squad car and opened fire on, on Richie, and another police officer in the area was hearing the commotion, obviously, with the, the gunfight, and pulls up to help his fellow officer and ends up shooting Richie down. Yes. Um, the officer returned the fire, which then killed 40-year-old Richie. Um, it wasn't until after this that law enforcement discovered that this man laying on the pavement was going to be responsible yeah. for so much more than possibly witnessing the refusal to pay a cab fare. In which, uh, during the reports of the police officers, they were dumbfounded on why... He just turned and opened fire on this officer. Like, he, there is no motive to do this. And, and it wasn't until afterwards when they found out. Yes. Hey, this gun is in. Yeah, because naturally, when a weapon is located at a crime of a scene and utilized, ballistics are going to step in. Yep. And following Richie's death, the Colt Python that was used to shoot this police officer had been sent to the lab for testing. Through the ballistics, it was then determined that this was the weapon responsible for the other the, the other the other four or five murders. Just two months prior. Exactly. I mean, it, it was all by stupid chance. Yes. And we've discussed people who got busted by absolute pure chance before. And what's crazy is that if... if like, again, saying Richie wasn't a stupid person. No. So if he would have just turned... And been polite to the officer, you know, maybe answered a couple of questions. He possibly could have walked away and still, See, and you know, like. That's why I asked, was there something mental health in play there? Especially since he tried to get help. And I'll go over it a lot. This will not be the first time you hear it. I am appalled by the mental health system in the U.S. Just completely sickened by it. Well, we've gone over so many that were either turned away, not taken seriously. Yes. Like it's just over over our videos on Facebook we've discussed that before. Yeah. Um, but, but it makes me wonder because so many of these it's like snap. Yeah. Something wasn't connecting up there. Something a neuron was misfiring. And and if you watch the the dash cam video, it it's literally what it is. Like as soon as the officer gets on the mic and t- and asks him to stop, you know he's got his lights going, the cherry's going. Richie literally was walking away from him the whole time throughout the video, not paying attention to the officer, and then just does a one eighty, and goes straight to the officer's squad car, like like dead bolts right right to it. It and would be so nice, and and it's a shame that we can't get this additional information, but it would be so nice to have been able to pick this person's brain. Like, what the hell were you thinking when yeah. you shot this officer? Or shot those five people. Yeah. Like, there, there was, it's so random. And there's such lack of information because obviously he was killed in the gunfire. And this was all recent. I mean, this is not... 2016. Too, not that long ago. It's um, a little... And here's the funny part. How many people actually even heard about this? Not a lot outside of Alaska. No, right? and that goes to show just how very isolated yep. those communities are. They're part of the U.S., 
but they're it's, so isolated. Because I, I don't remember hearing about that. I I was completely like, taken aback by it when when you suggested him. Just it was like oh. That was recent. Pourquoi? <laughs> Pourquoi? Yeah, it, it was it was definitely interesting, but I still am left thinking. Does he even? Does he even really deserve that title of right, serial killer? Because the span of murders lasted one month, but according to their definition, he was in the in during his cool down time because he had supposedly uh, when he got popped. Right, because he was doing the you know cool down time, which in the definition there is a cooling down time. Yeah, an emotional cooling period. So that's why he was in the category of serial killer. Now to each their own on whether he deserves that or not. And we, we will touch base with a lot of that that matter pretty frequently because I'm, I'm neurotic, and question everything, which I think makes for these decent conversations Absolutely. between the two of us. But I do. I constantly question certain serial killers as to whether or not do they actually fit that definition, that description. And like, again, that's like why Charles it's problematic. No, Charles Manson, and I will stand by this, is not a serial killer, nor Agreed. does he deserve to be put into that same slot. He was a flipping cult leader. Yep. I watched my F-bomb that time. <laughs> so, in conclusion, that, that's our uh, serial killer of the day. Yes, and please, somewhere in the comments, let us know. Do you really think that this guy should have this title or... He definitely isn't a mass murderer. No. But, it, but with it being so randomized, just let us know. Your opinions, let, they let matter. Know what you guys think. Like, we really like hearing the additional opinions because, you know, and, it's only two heads. And sorry about the uh, mic issue on our first video. Uh, it has been fixed, so we've got that taken care of. So For anybody out there who is new to streaming, vlogging, blogging, whatever, um,. When utilizing your equipment and you notice something's off, always, always check the most simple. obvious issue. And, and it really was. It was a very simple issue. We simply neglected to turn the camera's microphone off, and it was canceling out our good microphone. Yep. So. So. Yeah. Issue solved. Hopefully we can be heard a bit better. Yes, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> So we appreciate you guys very much. Yes, thank you so much like, for comment, uh, joining us. Yes, please like it, comment, share it, comment. Sub subscribe. Yes, please subscribe. And do not forget, we are also on TikTok. Yep. At, what was it? SKAC. 13666. And, and we Facebook. also have Facebook. If you go to the information tab on our YouTube channel, uh, the information tab, if you scroll down under links, it has a direct uh, link to our Facebook uh, page. Now, so. on our YouTube, or, or not our YouTube, my goodness, on our Facebook, we do, we'll start doing more uh, live feeds. Um, a lot of, it's a whole lot of joke sharing, memes, so Typical on and so page forth. Stuff, but um, a lot of questions about have you heard about this serial killer or information. As, yeah, and as we've mentioned before, we do really bad movie reviews yes so, which our, our next one will probably be a movie review oh my this ought to be fun yeah so i'm gonna need more alcohol <laughs> but thank you so much for coming and joining and listening to us rant rave and act like goofy goobers appreciate you guys you all have very pleasant nightmares